have some netting. We have a roasting tin. We have a bag of stencils. We have lots more rusty things. We have some tea bags. We have a boiling kettle. Uh, we have delicious rusty treasures. And I'm going to make some tea dyed paper. And I'm going to show you my technique and then you can have a go. So first things first, I use this roasting tray and we need to make our tea. So just boil the kettle, we'll make some tea. Okay, we'll just let that um, stew. Right, once that's had enough time to brew into a nice rich coloured tea, give it a bit of a squish. Now, it depends on obviously how dark you want your papers to be as to how many tea bags you would use and how long you would leave them in. Um, and then also how long you then leave the whole thing in to set, so to speak. And I usually do it at least overnight to allow all the colours of this tea to permeate. So I'm going to pit them to one side because I'm going to use them later. And then we just start with our first layer. Now I have a mixture of different papers and it's very hot still so I'm just being super careful that I don't burn myself. Uh, I like to use rusty items to get some really interesting effects. So I found these just while I've been out walking and just going to slowly start layering them, layering them up. So you just keep adding in your papers. Another thing I like to do use stencils so you will find that the weight of the papers on top will imprint onto your papers so let's go add some more rusty things different weights of paper, so that's a little bit of a heavier weight, and this is a bit flimsier. What I wanted to try as well was seeing what happens if I use some of this net that's come from fruit packaging, so I'm going to add that in. Now it's cooling down nicely now so I can get my hands in there just start pressing. never tried with this netting before so this is a whole new experiment I'll throw in a few of these maybe with the net just to see what effect that has it's usually quite easy to find these rusty bottle tops in the street and been run over by cars but if you can't find any just literally get some normal ones squash them and leave them out in the rain or even in a bucket of water for a few days and uh, you'll be surprised what comes out this is getting quite lumpy now what's good as well for a bit of added texture i'm going to add some coffee so this is some ground coffee from my coffee machine. See what happens when we add that in. 
Okay, what you can do now is you could stick in the tea bags and create a layer with the tea bags. So I think could go really well. Right, and then you just tip it all around. The only trouble with using this ground coffee is that when it comes to drying. You end up with bits of dried coffee everywhere, uh, which you then have to wait till it dries and brush off. So it just adds a little bit extra work. I have no idea how that's going to turn out, so that's, that's going to be interesting. Okay, so let's put a few more layers on top, just for some general coffee dyed, tea dyed, whatever plunk those on. All right, and I'm just getting that all soaked in all that lovely tea. Just give it a good tip and then I'm going to leave it overnight and we'll come back in the morning and see what's happened. I'm wondering if, because there is so much in it this time, whether to put a weight on top. Well, I don't normally bother with that, so <laughs> I might just leave it. Something else I wanted to try. A couple more bits. Just out of interest, see what happens with that. See how far that soaks through. This is the metallic one. I do love experimenting with, with this because inevitably, wherever you end up with, you're going to be able to use in some shape or form. Finishing touch. A little ground coffee. And a little more water just to get that to react a bit. This is now soaked overnight and it's time for the excited bit. I can't wait. Right now you have to be very careful because this has obviously been soaking and it's very fragile, particularly the thinner bits. So all you do is very carefully lift off each piece. So this was the top one um, and you can see that this dark patch here is where some of the rust has soaked through um, and then we've got some interesting um, patterns coming through from, from, the, from the tea and the little bits of coffee I added. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hang these up to dry. I'll just go through a couple. There's a bit of that alcohol ink there which has left an interesting bit of colour. I'm not going to film the whole thing because that would be take forever but I'll just um, get down to the first rusty layer. Look here, lovely patterns on the tea bags. That's it, super carefully lifting it off. Oh, actually we've got the net. That'll be interesting to see what that's done. Now, when it dries, you get a whole new look as well. So, you can just see that it's done something there, but look at what the rusty things have done. You can see, so the net's done a little bit of patterning. As it starts to get further down, I tend to try and, and when you get to these bits that create more of a stencil, I try to dry it off before I lift it out. Look at what that stencil's done, that looks fantastic. There's some really good patterns coming out here. So the stencil's on the layer below. Look 
look at that that's real industrial grunge on this page on this page here press too hard because don't forget the paper at this point is really fragile right also now I've got down to this I can go I'm gonna go and tip out some of this now I've tipped out most of the tea the liquid this is just I love this part of the process because you just don't know what you're gonna get look at that the, the way the paper creased and obviously the beauty from the rust and I'll show you all these again when they're dry. Coming up to another stencil layer, so let's give that a good pat down now. That's come out lovely as well. So on this piece, I'd probably end up cutting that and using that differently. Fast forward through the rest of this, just so you get to see the big reveals. When you get to the bits that's got all the coffee on, um, just be prepared for a bit of mess. It's best to wait until it's dry and then you can easily brush the coffee off. Oh, that's a shame, that one's torn probably pre kept pressing down too hard on it however it's probably a happy accident because look how it's torn out it's going to just make a really nice insert so I'm, I'm not too bothered cut through some of the paper. It's the first time I'd used the wire. The bottle caps work really well. They just give that amazing texture and obviously they're they're really flat. Uh, they've been run over by cars mostly. <laughs> so I get them from car parks. <laughs> We're coming up to another stencil layer. So this is I find if you get all the moisture out you don't end up with any residual moisture running onto where the, the stencil's been and ruining the effect. And you quite often, because of the weight of everything, you get a texture as well, so that's really beautiful. Okay, this is the exciting. This is going to be so good. Look at that! Wow! And the wire worked really well on this one as well. I'm going to have to be so careful getting this one out. And what we're also getting now is... What we're also getting now is the pattern or the, from the base of this uh, old roasting tray. So there's a slight like rustiness coming from that. So this, what, this mottled effect that you're seeing isn't just from the can. That's from the base of the tray. There. Look at that. So I think this is just one piece. Final piece. Here's a quick look through the finished products. You can see here the uh, net texture and then the lovely rusty items. This is one of my favourite things to uh, to use. It just always always gives me a great texture. This is the one from the bottom. As you can see, it really pulled up all that patina, I guess you would call it, from the bottom of the tray. Here's one with the stencils, as you can see. You get some good effects using stencils. The lovely rusty can. And the wire. Now, quite a few of these papers, you get little um, air bubbles which have formed, which make a really lovely pattern. There's the one with the 
cog stencil. Here's another stencil one. Um, and this is actually quite textured as well from the stencil. This is another great one for air bubbles and um, and the net effect has come out really well on here as well. Air bubbles on this one are fantastic. Look at those. This was with the alcohol ink. Didn't do a great deal. Probably wouldn't bother just, you know, pop it on top when you're finished. It hasn't really made a great deal of difference. But this one's got some really good creasing. These are some of the rusty wires. The tea bags and net. And some lovely uh, pattern here with the air bubbles. Unfortunately, that ripped. So I'm just going to be very careful if I use the wire again. Yeah, and there's the rest. So I've got some great materials to craft in. There's another one of the net. That's worked really well. Yeah, I am very happy with this batch. Some good air bubbles in this one. The other side looks brilliant. We've got some really good texture here with the net and the rusty items. The bottle tops, really cool marks left in there. I would suggest that you really just go out and experiment. Chuck things in, see what happens. Just be careful when you um, press down because you don't want too many rips. Although never throw things away. You can always use it for something. So a happy Lisa is ready to start crafting with these papers.